Hi, I'm Anuja Kishan Singh Gohil and I am a graduate student in the ERM program and this is my second semester. Uh, today I'm going to talk about India and its environmental problems and overview on India and its environment. And I belong to Gujarat, I belong to a state called Gujarat which is the state where Gandhi was born uh, and geographically it's above Maharashtra, Mumbai. Mumbai most of you must have heard about it. So uh, let's start with the location of India. And so India is geographically located in the Northern Hemisphere. It is located, located in South Asia, bordered by countries like Pakistan, Nepal, and China. It is surrounded by three major water bodies, namely Arabian Sea, uh, Bay of Bengal, and the Indian Ocean. Let's have a closer look at the Indian, at the, play, at the location where India is based in Asia. So, so you can see it clearly. Um, uh, now we are also going to talk about the overview of Indian economy and let me tell you that India is the world's largest democracy. Uh, it emerged as a major power in the 1990s and it is a fast growing and a powerful economy. Um, so on this slide you can see that India ranks third in the world in GDP after China and USA. The currency of India is called a rupee, the symbol you can see it here right on the screen. And currently, one USD is 65.11 Indian rupees. Uh, Mumbai, which is uh, the city on west coast, is also known as the trade and finan financial capital of India. Um, there, is a continuous, uh, there is a continuous rising trend in India's GDP, which you can see it in this graph. And by economy, India is the seventh largest in the world by nominal GDP. Okay, this is an interesting picture showing uh, two sides of Indian economy. On the left, you can see the brick making industries, industry. And on the right is the famous Bollywood industry. And these are the Bollywood stars on the right. So the film industry in India is called the Bollywood industry. Let us talk about the Indian population. India is the second most populous country in the world after China. Um, the current population is over 1 billion and the population density as of 2017 is 390.11 per people per square kilometer. So based on the number, and this is uh, based on the number of births, deaths and net, net migration rates. Um, India's population makes 17.5% uh, of the world's population. This is because man, many people from rural areas, uh, they migrate to the urban areas. Um, because th there are chances of better living and a better lifestyle. There are also, um, so showing India's population density here, uh, the most of the population is concentrated in large cities of India like Mumbai, which is somewhere here. Uh, Delhi, which is somewhere here. And Bangalore, which is somewhere here. So, and apart from these three cities, there are other cities like Chennai and Bangalore, uh, which are also very pop population dense. And the major reason is, as I told you, people tend to migrate from rural to urban areas for a better living and a better lifestyle. Uh, Indian diversity, uh, diversity in India is unique. Um, most of the people are Hindus. Uh, Talking about the, okay, let's talk about the linguistic diversity first. Um, around 22 languages are recognized by the constitution of India and out of that 18 are official languages, over 114 languages are spoken in India. There are 216 mother tongues, 900 dialects. Hindi is the national language of India and English is commonly used for national, political, commercial and educational purposes. Let us talk about the uh, religious diversity in India. So most of the people in India are Hindus, which is followed by uh, Islam, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, and Jains. And each religion has its caste or subcaste, which is called jatis in local language. Um, now, as you as as you've been seeing, a lot of diversity in the language, a lot of diversity in the religion. So even people, uh, they, if you go to the north, the people will look different from the people in the south. 
people from the east will look different from the people in the west and this is largely because of the environmental and climatic conditions and the topography so the kind of dressing the lifestyle everything differ differs as you go to different uh, areas of india and that's how it's diverse so these are uh, different places of worship in india you can see there are a lot of temples and a lot of variation is variations in the temples uh, and lots of gods to worship and we also have a diversity in the food um, so every state actually has its own staple and local food so there's a huge variety of indian food which you can have if you come to india let's talk about the indian topography india consists of uh, various landforms from high mountain ranges extensive plains coasts uh, deserts and islands uh, besides the mainland there are two groups of island mainly the lakshadweep in the andaman uh, i'm sorry mainly the lakshadweep in the arabian sea and the andaman and nicobar islands in the bay of bengal india has a really long coastline of 7500 kilometers the major ranges in uh, the major himalayan ranges are called the great himalayas which are to the north mountain ranges are mainly the himalayas the aravallis and the satpuras the western ghats has the sahyadris and also there are a few on the eastern ghats so let me show you on this map okay we still have to come to that map so we haven't come yet all right uh, yes so so this is called the western ghat and this is called the eastern ghat so the western ghat has sahyadris and also there are few on the eastern ghats um when it comes to the rivers uh, mountains are the primary source of rivers uh, which derive their flow from rainfall snow and glacier melts india if we talk about the area india talks uh, india occupies uh, nearly 2.42% of land of the entire earth let's talk a little bit about the himalayas mm. the himalayas are geologically young mountains uh, they consist of three main series running parallel to each other the northernmost is known as the great himalayas or the himadri uh, the range contains a number of high peaks which include the mount everest um, which is the highest peak in the world and the second highest uh, peak is called the kanchenjunga the second range which is in the middle of the two ranges is called the middle himalayas or the himachal they lie south to the himadri the southernmost range is the outer himalayas or the shivalik so most of the rivers in the northern area or uh, northern india originate from these ranges and the major rivers are the indus the ganga the satluj and the brahmaputra ganga being the longest river and is also considered the most holy river in india Hmm. So let us talk about the northern plains. So uh, going further south are the northern plains. Northern Indian plains of Indus and Ganga were formed by alluvium that was carried uh, by Indus and Ganga rivers originating from the Himalayas. This led to the formation of vast northern plains of thick and fertile alluvium in northern India. So there are three parts of northern plains and they are they are fertile regions. So because there there's lots of fertility here. agriculture is the biggest boom which india could have as an industry uh, in and in the economical growth um and as, uh, as you can see from the pictures there's lots of greenery in india too next we come is the the next slide which we come to is the peninsular region and this is a triangular shaped region whose vertex is called is near kanyakumari so this is basically the peninsular region and the vertex so over here is the kanyakumari so that's the southernmost tip uh, and it ends here which is in calcutta so if you go to kanyakumari you can see all the three beautiful water bodies which i mentioned before uh, from one point uh, lots of greenery and coconut trees and that's why lots of food in south uh, based on coconut oil uh, you can see okay Let's talk about the coastal plains now. Uh, India has a long coastline, as I talked about it before. 
these plains lie between western ghats and the arabian sea and the eastern ghats and the bay of bengal i showed you eastern ghats and western ghats before on the map so eastern ghats and the western ghats uh, the west coast has a number of big seaports such as mumbai and cochin the next are the deserts so there are three there are mainly three types of deserts the cold mountain desert of trans himalayas so um trans himalayas is between the ranges uh, then it's the white salt desert uh, of kutch which is known as uh, rar of kutch and the thar desert which is in rajasthan it is also called the sandy desert so so the run of kutch is in gujarat the state where I, i belong to and the last desert which i talked about is in rajasthan so let's see um yeah yes so we have the run of kutch here which is in gujarat and rajasthan is here and the first desert we have somewhere here so the last topic which we have to introduce india is the islands so uh, we so there are uh, the islands are the major tourist in attraction in india and uh, and the man and nicobar islands are at the southern southern southeastern part of bay of bengal and the lakshwadweep islands are in the arabian sea and some of these islands are inhabited and some are not another interesting fact about the islands is that uh andaman and nicobar islands are less than 50 km in length per island the next topic which we start is air pollution 